Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snails one more time, continuing our great playlist on pulmonology. Today we'll talk about bronchiectasis and obstructive lung disease. In previous videos we have talked about bronchial asthma, COPD, and now it's time for bronchiectasis. With that being said, now let's get started. As you know, lung diseases are divided into obstructive and restrictive. Obstructive, I cannot get the air out. Restrictive, I cannot get the air in. I'm restrictive from filling. Obstructive include for asthma, COPD, bronchiectasis, and even bronchiolitis. Bronchiectasis is today's topic. Ectasia means what? Dilation. And bronchi means like the bronchial tree. So dilation of the airways or of the bronchial tree. It's an irreversible condition. Once you dilated those airways, they are not going back. Here is just an illustration. Here is bronchiectasis. There is ectasia or dilation of the airways, usually in the lower part or the lower half, or you can say the lower lobe. Could be in the upper lobe, yes, but it's mostly in the lower one. Complications, it's usually a bacterial infection. Not always. So uh, TB is the most common cause worldwide. In the Western world, it's cystic fibrosis. But then the lung gets infected. You cannot clear those airways. Stagnation creates bacteria. The patient will cough cupfuls of pus or purulent sputum, which is foul smelling, as you might imagine. Complications include suppuration. They might be empyema because sometimes there is a duct. Okay, that forms between here and the pleura. This is abnormal, leading to empyema. Do not confuse empyema with pyemia. Empyema is pus in the pleural cavity. Pyemia is a septic emboli. The septic focus or the septic embolus leaves the pleura and goes to the blood. Not the pus. Don't say pus in the blood. Wrong. There's no such thing. It's the septic focus or the septic embolus traveling in the blood, going to other organs such as the brain, leading to brain abscess. Since emphysema is a chronic inflammation, you can expect amyloidosis, which is secondary amyloidosis, especially in the kidney. Definition of bronchiectasis, persistent, irreversible, pathological dilatation and outpouching of the bronchi and bronchioles, secondary to what? Destruction of airway cartilage and elastic tissue. Why did this happen? Usually inflammation or infection. The segmental bronchi will fill up with mucus, as we have seen. This is pus, purulent sputum. Then they become fibrotic. Could be focal in just one place or diffuse. Focal can be removed surgically, but diffuse, if it involves like the entire lung or both lungs, a surgery is not an option. Could be tubular, like this. Cylindrical, like this, which is secular. Varicose, or varicose like this or cystic when there is cyst, as a cyst. Could be caused by infectious or non-infectious. Could be primary or secondary. In primary, the lung was normal before the bronchiectasis. But in secondary, the lung had a problem before the bronchiectasis and then bronchiectasis came on top of the infection. Primary include adenovirus. The lung was normal, the adeno came. Whenever you hear the word adeno, think of conjunctivitis as well. Secondary, you had cystic fibrosis before. So you had a lung problem before. This leads to prevention of clearance of organisms and debris, leading to bronchiectasis, which is due to infection or inflammation. Definition, irreversible pathological dilatation and outpouching of bronchi and bronchioles. What are the causes? Lots of them. Number one, cystic fibrosis, the most common cause in the United States and in all Western countries. Infection. Tuberculosis is the most common cause in third world countries, such as the country that I came from, and it's the most common cause worldwide. Okay, so if I was living in Egypt and I have a patient with bronchiectasis, play odds, what's the most common cause? TB. Then I went to the United States. I had a patient with bronchiectasis. What is the most common cause? Play odds? Cystic fibrosis. Next, severe pneumonia could be viral, adeno, or influenza, or bacterial pneumonia such as staph or haemophilus influenza. Bordetella pertussis, big time. Actually, the vaccine against pertussis will decrease the in incidence of bronchiectasis. Mycobacterium avium complex, or MAC, classically involves right middle lobe and left lingula, which is equivalent or analogous to the left middle lobe, or to that, because there is no such thing as left middle lobe. 
we call it lingula, because it's small, thanks to the heart occupying the space. Next, we have immotile cilia syndrome. It has three names. The second name is Cartagenar syndrome. The third name is primary cilia dyskinesia. We'll talk about this in the next video. In brief, your cilia are not working. When your cilia are not working, your mucociliary escalator, the pseudostratified columnar epithelium, is not working. It cannot push the debris out. It cannot cure the sputum. I'm sorry, it cannot clear the sputum. This will lead to stagnation and bacteria love stagnation. This will lead to bronchiectasis. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, as we have discussed before. This is a patient with persistent asthma or cystic fibrosis. He's not responding to treatment, leading to airway inflammation and mucus infection and can end up with bronchiectasis. We're still talking about the etiology. Focal bronchial obstruction. Let's say there is a bronchogenic carcinoma and it's proximal. It can occlude the lumen distal to it. So let's say here it is the cancer. All of this, nothing is going to drain. It's going to dilate and this is bronchiectasis distal to the carcinoma, distal to the obstruction. It could be lymph node or a foreign body causing the obstruction. It doesn't have to be a cancer. But don't say alveolar cell carcinoma because the alveoli are at the end of the tree. It has to be in the bronchi or bronchioles. Decreased mucociliary clearance such as cystic fibrosis, cartagenous, HIV, big time. That's why you should test a patient with bronchiectasis for HIV. Immunoglobulin deficiency, you cannot fight infection or clear up the debris. Toxin inhalation, such as chemical fumes and aspiration, especially gastric content. Please don't forget scleroderma slash crest syndrome, because remember the E, esophageal dysmotility. If your esophagus is not working, it cannot get rid of the stuff. You can end up with aspiring the stuff, leading to aspiration and bronchiectasis. Let's review. Crest, C stands for calcinosis and anti-centromere antibody, R for Raynaud's phenomena, E for esophageal dysmotility, S for sclerodactyly, and T for telangiectasias. Causes include alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid and Jogren inflammatory bowel disease, GERD, big time gastroesophageal reflux disease. Patients with GERD, sometimes they have asthma, and they could also have bronchiectasis. Post-radiation fibrosis. Okay, you go to the radiologist to radiate like a cancer or something. After the radiation, you get fibrosis. After the fibrosis, you get traction bronchiectasis. Because of the fibrosis, you have destroyed your elastic tissues in the bronchi. They're going to dilate. This is post-radiation fibrosis leading to traction bronchiectasis. There is a very rare disease called yellow nail syndrome. It's a triad of primary lymphedema, yellow dystrophic nail and pleural effusion, they can also have bronchiectasis. Epidemiology, the most common cause of bronchiectasis is, it depends on where you live. Worldwide, it's TB. United States and Western countries, cystic fibrosis, especially Caucasians. But please be specific, like I'm Egyptian, I'm Caucasian. It's Europe. Please be specific, Northern European countries, so Scandinavian countries and the like. Is it fair? It's not fair. Is it true? It is true. The incidence of bronchiectasis is commoner in women than men. Why? I have no idea. The pertussis vaccine actually reduces the incidence. And this is reason number 39 why you should vaccinate your kids. Clinically, symptoms and signs. Symptoms, the patient is going to describe at this. I, I'm coughing lots of gunk. It's, it's yellowish. It's purulent. It's foul smelling. It's thick tenacious, copious amount. What do you mean? Like like a teaspoon? No, 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 no. Not just a teaspoon. I mean tons. I mean cupfuls of pus. This is bronchiectasis. Cupfuls could be two things. If the patient describes is a cupful. Cupful of what? Cupful of mucus. This is chronic bronchitis and obstructive lung disease. Cupfuls of pus or purulent sputum this is bronchiectasis, another obstructive lung disease. Hemoptysis, sometimes massive. But let me ask you this, what's the most common cause of hemoptysis? Answer, chronic bronchitis. It's not TB, it's not cancer, it's not bronchiectasis. It can happen on all of this, but it's the most common cause, chronic bronchitis. Signs, nail clubbing. With any suppurative lung disease, expect nail clubbing. You can also see nail clubbing with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and lung cancer. Complications of bronchiectasis include recurrent infection, life-threatening hemoptysis, 
core pulmonary okay because now your heart your right side of the heart because it has the pulmonary artery cannot pump blood against this sick lung because of the obstruction because of the bronchiectasis because of the pus because of the it's 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 very hard to push blood against it so you will end up with pulmonary artery hypertension with loud p2 when you auscultate the heart right ventricular hypertrophy because the right ventricle is trying to push blood into the pulmonary artery and then to the lung this will cause hypertrophy and at the end you'll end up with right sided heart failure when you have right sided heart failure like venous drainage will decrease leading to distension of all of the veins in your neck jugular venous distension and in your ankle ankle edema due to increased hydrostatic pressure and the liver's capsule of glycine liver distension very common jugular venous distension plus ankle edema plus liver distension equals right-sided heart failure this empyema in the lung can lead to pyemia can lead to can go to the brain leading to brain abs it can go to any organ leading to abscess and suppuration in that organ chronic inflammation can lead to secondary amyloidosis how to diagnose bronchiectasis you need the clinical diagnosis first symptoms and signs symptoms patient with history of cystic fibrosis or tb or allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillus coughing which is foul smelling and copious amount of pus cup folds you might even find hemoptysis signs on inspection you find clubbing big time auscultation you'll hear crackles and wheezing by the way i've told you before that ronchi are different from wheezing okay it's it's true but this is historical nobody uses ronchi anymore and if your professor tells you otherwise he's lying i read a textbook called sapera's art and science of bedside diagnosis and the x-ray described that the terms crackles and even rolls are not used anymore i know cardiologists still use them but like here is the thing only you need three adventitious sound in the lungs to know wheezing crackles and friction rub of the pleura that's it to diagnose it go to the pathologist gross which means not disgusting but like big picture okay it's not microscopic so the problem is usually in the lower lobe bronchi and bronchial dilated it could be cylindrical or secular and the dilatation could be, could be extend to the periphery normally you have the bronchi dilatation in the beginning but when you go to the periphery they are very very teeny tiny if you see dilatation near the periphery this is bronchiectasis it could be four types tubular cylindrical varicose and cystic filled with pus suppurative purulent gunky foul smelling stuff microscopic you'll see dilatation of the bronchi and bronchial they become wider than the corresponding vessels normally here is the vessel in your distal lung and here is the bronchial normally the vessel is bigger with bronchiectasis it's the opposite the vessel is very teeny teeny tiny and the bronchial is very wide we call this signet ring sign it looks like the the ring that caesar used to like stamp uh, his uh, documents in order to i don't know that's how they used to pass law before parliament or congress <laughs> i'm a stupid idiot pulmonary function test you'll find obstructive pattern decrease fev1 decrease fvc decrease fev1 fvc ratio and others watch my video on pulmonary function test chest x-ray ct and high resolution ct this is very detailed but cons it has lots of radiation exposure chest x-ray usually non-specific it's very hard to diagnose bronchiectasis from a chest x-ray but you can find tram tracking normally here is your airways when they are dilated they form stuff like this and like this it's like this so this is like a you know like a tram track of the train yeah pathologists are very creative once upon a time there was a five-year-old kid helping his daddy at the railroad back in the 1900s and then he went to medical school and became a doctor and described tram tracking i'm joking of course crowded bronchial markings extending to the periphery this is not normal normally when you do a chest x-ray here's your lung you should see the markings here and that's it if they extend to the periphery they mean they are dilated and this is abnormal this is bronchiectasis they should not extend to the periphery normally CT scan will show the same thing crowded bronchi bronchial marking extending to the periphery now to the horror resolution CT scan, the king of diagnosis of bronchiectasis. Crowded bronchial markings, we get it because of the dilation. Parallel tram tracking, we get it because of the dilation. Dilated bronchi and bronchioles into the signet ring. Why? 
because now the bronchioles and the bronchi are bigger than the corresponding vessels and this is called the signet ring cell classic description of bronchiectasis lack of bronchi tapering there is no tapering they are dilated baby bronchial wall thickening yes it's inflammation and cyst yep tree in bud sign and please use your search engine to look up for the sign could be infection so sputum analysis gram stain and culture could be cystic fibrosis it's the most common cause in the western world sweat chloride test please test for hiv because it's one of the causes test for the immunoglobulin level because hypo gamma globulinemia is a cause aspergillus antigens can prick test if you suspect allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis which we have discussed in a previous video in brief there is a patient with history of chronic persistent asthma or cystic fibrosis not responding to treatment and describe the sputum as brown and the x-ray describes infiltrates which come and go and then come and go and then come and go how to manage bronchiectasis depending on the symptoms the gram stain culture the sweat chloride test etc clear the chest of the pus how educate the patient on how to cough and which position to use in order to get rid of the pus postural drainage which is the same idea chest physiotherapy mucolytics also known as expectorants such as guanifacine please here is a very good thing to remember forever never ever ever give an anti tussif together with a mucolytic it's an oxymoronic thing i don't believe you okay wait a sec what does mucolytic do mucolytic will make the mucus moist and easy and less thick so that you can cough it so mucolytic wants you to cough anti tussive decrease your cough reflex so which is it if you combine it it's like saying oh objective morality does not exist and you are a bad person like pick one dude pick one the first law of logic is the law of non-contradiction jeez so when you go to the pharmacy and you see anti tussive and mucolytic written together on the same medication please run as fast as you can it's a marketing gimmick okay flutter valve is also possible if the patient has allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis treat it as allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis oral steroid plus itraconazole and we have discussed this in the previous video if the patient has cystic fibrosis give dnas and others if the patient has no cystic fibrosis do not give dnas you are making it worse if there is massive hemoptysis you need to intubate protect the other lung from the blood and you might even need vascular embolization done by the intervention radiologist a guy who or a gal who earns bazillion of dollars every year or surgical resection localized if it's localized if it's diffuse you cannot surgically resect it and this is done by the thoracic surgeon another person who earns bazillions of dollars i don't envy them god bless them bronchiectasis exacerbation what are they change in the nature of sputum increase the volume and increase purulence it's more pussy and gunky and foul it's horrible how to manage this exacerbation antibiotics because it's usually a bacteria and please know which organ to target by doing the sputum stain and culture and all of this stuff clinical pearls my favorite part an aneurysm in an artery is equivalent to bronchiectasis in airway think about it it's dilation in the wall Mm. and it's equivalent to diverticular disease in the GIT same freaking concept medicine makes so much sense if explained properly exam question the patient is described as any patient with bronchiectasis on your exam is going to be described as middle-aged or older patient with chronic cough productive of cupfuls of pus which is foul smelling maybe hemoptysis starts slowly over time if they have a history of one of these or suddenly and this is severe pneumonia or chemical inhalation chronic wheezing is one of two things or could be more copd or bronchiectasis in severe persistent asthma the high resolution ct may show area of bronchiectasis and thickening of bronchial walls like birds of feather flock together all of the obstructive lung diseases can show the same findings bronchiectasis is mostly in the lower lobes if it's cystic fibrosis upper lobe if it's the mac middle lobe or lingula if it's caused by cartagena middle lobe or lingula if it's caused by allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis central and usually the airway is not the alveoli it's not distal it's more proximal because this is like associated with asthma think people bronchiectasis and cystic fibrosis becomes clinical significant in late adolescent or adulthood if it's caused by the mac non-smoking women older than 50 
please subscribe and join the tribe hit the bell and smash like follow me on facebook i have more than 100 cases there you can get my premium videos my post notes my cases my audio notes by going to patreon.com slash medicosis including the slides of this video thank you for watching as always be safe stay happy and study hard this is medicosis perfectionalis where medicine makes perfect sense